At one point in my young Christian life, I thought it must be really great to be the pastor because I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about. Did you realize that? That's, that's how, when I was sitting out there, that's exactly what I thought the pastor did. The pastor gets to talk about whatever the heck he wants to talk about. It wasn't until sometime later when I was starting to try and do it that I found out the pastor doesn't really have a whole lot of control over that. God says, I want you to talk about this. And for me, anyway, and, and I tried this once, not talking about the things God wanted me to talk about. That was kind of a disaster. You, you know how I say my sermons are generally short? That one was really short. It was about five minutes. I heard quite a bit about that one. So I started letting God choose what he wanted me to talk about. Now, sometimes he puts things on my heart and he kind of lets me alone. And that's a wonderful thing, I'm telling you. Because this week, he said... What I'm putting on your heart are the apostles. And I said, okay. And he said, I want you to take that and start. And I said, you know, it, it's just me. And my wife would say that my favorite apostle is Paul because I get a lot of my material from Paul because Paul spoke to the Gentiles. But it's not. Don't tell her. It's not. Peter is my favorite. Peter's always been my favorite. And I had to stop and ask myself, well, why is Peter your favorite? Because he's different. Did you ever realize that Peter's just a little different than everybody else? Now, he wasn't the one that Jesus loved. We read that in John. John was the one Jesus loved. But Peter was the one that Jesus kind of said, I can depend on him. This guy's different. Now, how did Peter get to be different? Well, actually, this is going to be kind of like a Bible lesson today, I suppose. Because I want to talk about Peter today. I would like to talk first about how Peter met Jesus. Now, if you read in Matthew and in Mark you hear that Peter met Jesus down on the beach and Jesus said come on and follow me and that was that Luke tells it a little bit differently and I love this one Luke talks about Peter knowing about Jesus before he met him can you imagine that Peter knew about Jesus before he met him he had heard that Jesus was a teacher Jesus was a healer. And this was something that the people in that time expected people to do. They expected people to have, much like we do today, you have a profession, you have something that you do. That's what they expected Jesus to be. And that's exactly how Peter looked at him. Peter went and listened to him, and he invited him home for dinner. Luke, the fourth chapter, it says, All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is his teaching? With his authority and power, he gives orders to evil spirits, and they come out. And all the news about are spread around through the surrounding area. And then, then, this is Luke 4, 38. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law had a high fever and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever and it left her and she got up at once and began to wait on him. Simon was there when that happened. Now, if you had been there, how impressed would you have been? I'm kind of uh, amazed that Peter wasn't as impressed as I would have been, I'm thinking. Because in chapter 5, things get to a head.
they were out fishing and they'd been there all night and as they're coming in Simon and his brother Andrew they're coming in they've been out all night and Jesus is standing on the bank and he says have you caught anything and they said well no and Jesus said let down the net for a catch just let it down and so they did he dropped his net into the water and he received this huge catch of fish and then the amazing part starts now I would have thought that was amazing but it's even more than that for Simon Peter Luke 5 8 when Simon Peter saw this he fell to his knees at Jesus' feet and said go away from me Lord I am a sinful man for he and all his companions were astonished at this catch of fish that they had taken in and so were James and John Zebedee's sons the partners of Simon and then Jesus said to Simon don't be afraid now I want you to think about that for a minute Jesus had been in Simon's house the night before. He'd healed his mother-in-law. She got up and got to waiting on him, and they took that for granted. His teaching in the synagogue, Peter took that for granted. But when he came out there and made the fish come to him, Peter saw something special. This is somebody really, truly special. And when he saw that, he was overcome, and he said, Please, no more. I need you to get away from me because I am a sinful man because that's what fishermen were. They were rough and tough and they were not wonderful, kind, sweet people. And they're kind of like, I suppose, professional fishermen are today. I've never done that job, but I've heard that that's kind of what they're like. And when Simon Peter saw that Jesus had control even over the fish in the ocean, he realized that this is somebody very, very, very special. And his first response wasn't, let me come and help you. Let me be part of it. He was like, no, let me out of this. Let me ask you, you ever felt like that? You ever felt that? I did. I was 27 years old. Uh, I'm going to get married. I'm going to have a family. I'm going to do all kinds of things. Jesus said, I want you to come and be with me. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I am a sinful man. Please leave me alone. Well, unlike Simon Peter, Jesus said, well, if that's what you want, you can have it. Difference is, Simon Peter, Jesus wanted right then. And he said, you come with me now, and I will make you a fisher of men. And Simon Peter, his brother, and his partners all dropped what they were doing and started following. They followed him. Simon Peter was the one who was, like I said, he's, he's different. I really like him because he's the guy that when they were out crossing the lake... Now, keep in mind, all the apostles were together in that boat when they were crossing the lake. Jesus is on the shore. They're pulling at the oars because the, waves, the wind's against them. They're working and they're... Simon Peter's the one that said, Lord, if that's you out there, just tell me to come on out and I'll do her. The rest of them stayed in the boat. You'll notice that. When we read that story, the rest of them stayed right there in the boat only one of them got out Simon Peter Peter got out of the boat and he started walking to the Lord because he said if you tell me to do it I can do it because I have such faith in you until he got out of the boat I do not want you to think that I am picking on Peter for starting to sink now we, we as people say, well, if I had gotten out of that boat, I could have walked right on over there because once I got out, I'd have been sure I'd be there. 
I'm afraid I would have been like the other 11. I'd have stayed in the boat. Simon Peter was the one that got out. I do not want to take anything away from him for starting to sink. And Jesus reaching out and saying, you have little faith. Little faith? He had the faith to get out of the boat and walk on the water. Started slipping, he started sinking, he said, help me. Tell me, when was the last time you started sinking and you looked around and said, Jesus, please help me out of this mess? And keep in mind, it wasn't because Jesus told you to get out of the boat, it's because you got yourself in there. Or at least I have. Can't speak about anybody else in the whole wide world but me, but I've got myself into the messes and go, please, Lord, if you'll just get me out of this one, then I can get into the next one. And the one after that. But as long as you keep reaching down and grabbing my hand and pulling me out and saying, hmm, I don't know about you. Sometimes I wonder about that. I wonder, Jesus doesn't look at me when he's pulling me out of this. He doesn't say, I don't know about you. You haven't learned yet. Simon Peter, Simon Peter was special because he was always right there. He was always right there. Now keep in mind, Jesus told the disciples about himself. He told all of them. They were all right there together. And he told them who he was, pretty much. And then he asked, what does the What do the people say I am? Who do the people say I am? Remember that? Well, some say that you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets. Jesus looked down and said, okay. Now, who do you say I am? What about you guys? There's 12 of you standing here. Who do you say I am? And 11 of them stood there just like I would have going. And one of them looked up and said, you are the son of God. Guess which one it was? Simon Peter. He was right there. He was was the guy on the top. He was the guy who was right there. And then Jesus says to him, Don't you wish that Jesus would say this to you every once in a while? Blessed are you. Because God revealed that to you. It's not from you. It's from God who told you who I am. But Simon Peter had to be listening. Sometimes we forget we have to listen to God. To hear him. You actually have to listen for God to speak to you. Did you know that? I told you. I did a sermon once where I didn't listen to what God had for me to tell you. Well, not you, but the congregation there. And I told you what happened because I didn't listen. Simon Peter was amazing. He listened. And he showed us the example of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to step out on faith. Get out of the boat on faith. You're supposed to listen to God Almighty and listen to what he's got to tell you. And then you get to the hard part. You have to do it. Jesus told Peter, step out of the boat. The other 11 didn't, but Peter did. Why? The other 11 were there. They could have easily stepped out too. Their faith wasn't going to allow them to do what Simon Peter's did. He showed us that when you step out on faith, Jesus will take your hand and he'll pick you up out of the water. If you accept his instructions, come, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. For three years he followed, doing what Jesus wanted to become that fisher of men. He heard and he followed. And then 
he was blessed. Peter was tremendously blessed because Christ looked at him. The Christ looked at him. Now, who do you say I am? You're the Son of God, the Holy One. Blessed are you when you hear and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Blessed are you when you hear what he has for you. When you listen to the love that he gives you. When, he, when you listen to the instructions that he has and you become what he has for you to be. He doesn't tell all of us, I will make you all fishers of men. He told Simon Peter that. But what is he telling you? That's the question. That's not the answer. And if you're looking to me for the answer, you're looking in the wrong spot. I don't know what Jesus told you. But I do know that he's telling you if you're listening. I do know that if you're having the faith, the faith to get out, as Peter did, then he's talking to you. It's not a question of whether or not he wants you to do something. It's a question of whether or not you do what he tells you. Simon Peter, he's my guy. He really is. He's my favorite. Why? Because he's the one who's different. I don't know about anybody else in the whole wide world, but I spent a lot of my time in school being the different one. I just was. No, I wasn't bullied, per se, because I was different, because I was different enough to make sure that I didn't get that. But I can tell you that going to school where I went to school... Most of the people I hung around with were not nearly as sharp as I was. I know that you're saying, you're blowing your own horn. No, the truth is, I was just a pretty quick kid. I was sharp. And I used that to keep myself at the top of the heap. Peter is that special guy. He's the one that just has that something. Today, Lord, just today, you've let us talk a little bit about that wonderful, wonderful apostle, disciple, man, leader that was Peter, the one who became the rock. Lord, we want you to talk to each of us. Put your word into us and allow us to hear. Lord, help each one of us to hear what you have for us. Help us to hear what you want us to be and do. Lord, help us to have the faith, the faith that Peter had to step out of the boat And when he was thinking to raise his hand and say, please save me. Because, Lord, we find ourselves there all too often. So reach down, touch us, save us. But as you save us, speak to us and let us know your will, your good and perfect will, that we might go out and do what you tell us to do today. This I ask in your name. Amen.